Another custom which still takes place is the custom of the Gotland Plowstots, which originated in Gotland a few miles inland from Whitby. This film, unfortunately of not very good quality, records the dance over the years. The custom dates back to the times over a thousand years ago when Norse raiders settled in Yorkshire. In fact, Gotland is a derivative from Godaland, meaning settlement of Norsemen. The Plowstarts are a team of sword dancers who dance up and down the long village streets hauling a plow and begging alms. In older days, they were said to shake the mud off their clogs and make merry, and only when they were refused money did they plow a furrow through the offender's front lawn. Today, the plow is used as a symbol of persuasion. Stot means bullock and refers to the young men, some dressed as women who danced through the village streets, colourfully dressed in their pink and blue costumes, depicting Isaac, Betty, Toad Man and Toad Woman. They could be seen on Plough Monday, traditionally the first Monday after the 6th of January, which was the old Christmas day. The Gentleman's Magazine for 1811 finished its description of the dance with these words. These frolics they continue till New Year's Day, when they spend their gains at the alehouse with the greatest innocence and mirth having invited all their rustic acquaintance. These charming sequences of film show the people of Whitby throwing a street party for their children in celebration of VE Day. Once again, the film is unique, and as before, filmed by Mr. Davis, the headmaster of the local school. They were rejoicing that the grimness of nearly six years was giving place to conditions which, if not likely to be normal for some time to come, were a relief from the darkness and peril which had been the lot of many, and from which none of them had entirely escaped. Whitby has its own unique record of the war, which was recorded in the Whitby Gazette of the 9th of February, 1940. A Heinkel bomber was shot down at the Baniel Flat, two miles out of Whitby, near the whitby Gisborough Road, on Saturday morning, after a fierce battle with three British fighters. Shipping had been attacked off the northeast and east coast of England, and later in the day, the Air Ministry announced that the Royal Air Force machines had shot down two German bombers, and very seriously damaged a third which was believed to have crashed down into the sea. Hundreds of Whitby people were eyewitnesses of the engagement of the enemy bomber and the British fighter machines. It was the first enemy plane to crash on English soil in this war, the RAF's previous similar success having been in Scotland. The pilot of the successful RAF plane, a certain Flight Lieutenant Peter Townsend, was later to become world-renowned as the escort of the young Princess Margaret.
It was said in 1537 that Bridlington stands in a far corner of the Shire, adjoining to the sea where no resort is of strangers, except such as dwell about the same that come to the market there. For over two centuries more, Bridlington, or Burlington as it was often called, remained a quiet market town with a small harbour. Since the mid-18th century, however, the adjacent sea and the resort of strangers have combined to transform it into a fashionable watering hole and as transport and therefore accessibility improved into a popular resort for seaside holidays. During prehistoric times, the countryside near Bridlington was extensively settled and prehistoric routes across the worlds may later have been followed by Roman roads. It is possible, moreover, that a harbour at the mouth of the Gypsy Race was used during the Roman occupation. The resort developed more rapidly when the railway from Hull was opened in 1846. The railway continued to be the main mode of arrival up to the 1950s. The method of launching and recovering the Bridlington lifeboat by means of a tractor with a deep wading capability, as seen here, is still in use in places along the Yorkshire coast. Even a slight surf can cause problems. Now, imagine the lifeboat being launched in the middle of the night in a storm with a heavy surf running, and you begin to realize the courage, skill and dedication shown by the lifeboat crews and the huge vote of thanks that is owed to them by so many for their dedication to duty. There has been an institution lifeboat here since the foundation in 1824 and the station is very much part of the community, standing high in its affections and respect. Each year a memorial service is held in memory of the great gale at Bridlington on the 